Let me put it this way. When I came back from my first deployment in 2005, there was nothing for us. It's hard running a household by yourself when you have limitations. You can't do it all, especially during deployment. You, you can't. You can't be everywhere at once. Soldiers, while they're going away, worry about, okay, what's going to happen today? Can my wife or husband take care of this? Can my parents take care of this? Are they getting the help they need? Do I have to call somebody to plow my driveway? We found out that the military is really good at turning citizens into soldiers and training them how to be vigilant, how to be good marksmen, how to protect themselves. And as good as we were in one direction, we had little to no expertise in the other. It's very, very difficult for a lot of the service members coming back. And no service member or his or her family should fall through the cracks. In the fall of 2004, I had the great honor of being nominated by then outgoing Governor Benson to become the Adjutant General for the New Hampshire National Guard. What we called natural care providers were doing a good job for us, but we had no organized program to make sure that people got engaged in this process. Uh, that's when people started coming together and saying, we can do this better. And that's where the whole concept of care coordinators kicked off. I'm a National Guard reservist. I was getting ready to deploy in 2010. And Jamie was seven months pregnant. And the doctor put her on bed rest. I couldn't be on my feet for more than 10 minutes. My husband wasn't quite deployed yet, but yet he was still being called here for two weeks for schooling, here for two weeks to do this. It was hard for me to do the daily tasks. Service members and their families are assigned. Each one in New Hampshire who is part of the program is assigned to care coordinator. And I call and um, I find out if they would like me to check in with them monthly to see if they have um, any needs that I could help out with, any um, issues that may need to be addressed. We had just gone through a very, very hard pregnancy prior to Morgan, um, we had lost that child full term. So my anxiety was up, you know, the doctor's anxiety was up. We had a high risk pregnancy um, and she needed somebody to come in and help out. Karen helped by setting up um, a helper to come in and take care of all the housework, um, take our oldest Abigail to school just making sure that she stayed in bed because that was important so that she would have a healthy baby, which she did. I'm not one to ask for help, but I honestly believe that if we had not gone for help and asked for help when I needed it, that um, my youngest might not be here. The program is available as long as it takes for that service member to say, I don't need your help anymore. I was training soldiers prior to deployment to get them ready for deployment. So given that it was my second time getting ready to leave again, it wasn't that big of a deal to me. But now that I had a little toddler running around the house, my biggest issues was, all right, how am I gonna get help to take care of my son? How's my wife gonna get help now that I'm gone? Who's gonna do the, all the labor, all the repairs, and help the load of taking care of my son? And the more I was able to send emails back and forth to Karen, I felt a lot more comfortable and relaxed and easygoing and able to say, hey, this is what's going on. I'm having these issues. A phone call to somebody on the staff who's looking at the larger picture is able to address the problem, whether it's a food card, paying a rent bill, buying a load of heating oil, uh, authorizing a car repair, uh, those kind of things that keep people on track uh, before they fall off the track. It's very, very difficult for a lot of the service members coming back 
Some of them um, have no jobs, so they're collecting unemployment. Before I came home, I didn't have a job or anything, and I was worried about financial stability, what I was gonna do with my family, and Karen helped me get the ball rolling. He uh, had emailed me and told me that he already had a couple of leads. He had a plan on how he was going to interview and be able to spend enough time with his family. She made sure I was able to get to the VA, get my appointments, still able to come over and help me with my son. And he did find the job. And I'm just very, very proud of Chris and all his accomplishments. It's an ongoing challenge. There's a tendency to think the war's wind, winding down. But remember, this is a deployment cycle support program. Deployment cycle is from moment of notification and there's no other end. It's that magic of outside of the DOD system, great cooperation and quick ability to solve problems. I'm very proud to be a part of a, a much bigger team that is concerned about our soldiers. I'm the most stubborn person you'll meet. I'm not going to lie. But you know, when you need help, you need help. you got to ask. And it's a great program to be able to ask help. It's very beneficial to your soldiers' hearts and minds. Just to get that extra help and add support means a lot more to the soldiers than you realize. Veterans Count immensely helped us as far as being able to concentrate on our kids and... And made it so that we could spend more time as a couple and with our family. The service members and their families have sacrificed a lot for us and it's the least I can do or the least I think any of us can do to be there for them to make sure that they have everything that they need. They're worth it.